Yes, here we go, keeping the ball on the ground, and we are live. That's a winner. We're not live, are we? But we'll just say we're live. Should we do a live one one day? I'm too dangerous, isn't it? Part You're too dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> uh, we're, we're in the Laurie Ross Insurance oh, office place. today. Home of Scotland's personal insurance broker. Oh, Get yourself a Laurie Ross for insurance. I'm, I'm insured on it. We do some great deals while day. For that, what have you got? What are you driving these days? Some Merc. Oh, oh, just a Merc! <laughs> just a Merc, sorry young man. Oh, uh, we need to talk about our sponsors. Volume Hill, you like Volume Hill? Good bookies. It's all right, aye. Just get the hustle. You're they're getting the deals on them, though. They're doing, mate. It's funny you should say that. If you bet £10, you get a free £30 pound bet. And also, the fabulous, tremendous Black Rooster. Brilliant. Still no went into it, but I heard it's brilliant. Never been in my life. Have <laughs> you been there? No. Oh, you need to get yourself there, mate. Is it class, sir? Get yeah, the Merc up to Black Rooster. Is it class? Uh -huh. It's Mylene class. Um, <laughs> Valentine's. Oh, no. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying on off on? And what are you just, doing with that mic? You gonna eat that mic? <laughs> <laughs> it's just because uh, the clip's not on, so I'm just uh, uh, improvising. Just gonna be ready, big man. Just improvising. So. We'll talk about your Valentine's first before. In fact, we'll, we'll talk about Greg Wild. Greg Wild's on the show. Oh, wow. Here, like, I am here. He was born, born to be wild. <laughs> he is Greg, Greg Wild. <laughs> Get your car and run it! Why are you saying that to me? He's <laughs> <It's> a <laughs> <young man. laughs> look on. I was going to be your second name to be wild. Imagine your name is Paul Wild. Oh, wow. You can actually, like, obviously, big stars change your names, but it's actually, I'm a wee bit intimidated because me and Wild, they obviously, back in the day, used to have head to head signing games. Mother would be Rangers youth, and my God, sight of me is absolutely. So to have him here today, I'm still not looked at one shit, sign of your name. I'm not understand. So I'll just. Uh, <laughs> but to be fair, you said going head to him, head with him, traumatised you for life. <laughs> James Milner, isn't he, man? <laughs> <laughs> he hates that shit, didn't he? Valentine's married now, Wild, what'd you, what'd you do for Valentine's? Nothing. I actually had cheesy pasta on Friday night. Oh, <laughs> superb. Did you make it yourself? Aye. <laughs> did you? What, what did you use? It's just pasta and cheese, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, what about your Valentine's? <laughs> Somebody says that you got Paul and Tim in a chew toy with Tom Boyd's teeth marks in it. No, I was, I, I was uh, very quiet, Si. Um, very quiet in the Valentine's side. Obviously, what did I do? No, I can't say. How about you, big man? No, uh, wait, I need to ask you first though, is this true that Paul the Tim's got an English team? Grimsby? Paul the Grim? Okay, <laughs> 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 no, Valentine's. Right, the reason we're asking, did you see Mrs. Kyle's Instagram post, the keeper. How Thoughts didn't like it. How much she put on? She put up a big picture about the card saying, lucky you've got a keeper. How lucky are you to have a oh, keeper? I'm joking, did she? I didn't, ah, I didn't it. play dumb. No, I, I didn't see dumb. it. Did you get the card though? I, I, she sent me a, a, a WhatsApp or a picture saying, oh, was uh, it you must be glad you're married to a keeper. Uh, I actually, I put that on Instagram. Instagram. See, I'm the one She's loving the keeper so thing, isn't she? Now? She is, aye. She's like pure, like pretends that she's not interested, but really she, she's like, like me to take shots at the hydro and that. <laughs> oh, brilliant. By the way, I've done a wee Valentine's poem. Oh, no. For you and Lynn. <laughs> Ready for it? There was a goalkeeper called Lynn whose husband couldn't get it in. He missed hunters of sitters and dropped all his fritters, so now he's laid in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> That's super upset. Rose is not. Ready? This is for you and... You know who? Yeah. There was a talented winger who goes with a horny ginger. He drinks cans of Monster and thinks he's a porn star, but he's got a pathetic wee pinger. <laughs> yes! What are you saying about that? <laughs> <laughs> that is so terrible. Last night, it was... I so bad. Bad. He always just does Sunday night, didn't he? Have a wee look through the notes Aye, around. He does. It's my worst part of the show, so the first 10 minutes, because I always know he's going to come for us at the end, so... Know, well, it's no nice, bit. is it, Kev? <laughs> We're going to... <laughs> By the way, see what Paul Tim do? Does he, do you get jealous when he texts me as a gainer? I don't know what's... Uh, was it... Was he seen him before he was seeing you? Aye, and uh, he's supposed to. So do you want to talk to me now? Because he he needs to come back after shelf now. Oh, he's, yeah. he's, he's, on, he's a wee bit, wee bit nervous in there. The he's, he's, his that, orange uh, farad is now turned like purpley red. That one, she was saying to me last week, stop mentioning me on that. I said, no worries, I'll sort it out. So it was a horrendous time. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you make the colour of his nose? Well, it's, it's actually orange, yeah. What, what is it? I fake put tan. fake tan on it last night, but usually you're meant to... It's the colour of your hands. Oh, you it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so you're usually meant to give, put it on sign a few years later, wash it off, but I refuse to wash it off. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to look really, really tan today for Greg Wilde, do you know what I mean? I wanted to make him feel special to be on the show, sign. So. Wilde, you could do it with a wee 12 minute, nah? Eh? I went for minutes, one so. last week, didn't I? Did you? Aye. Jay, your clothes on for it? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, we're going to go to the football, right? Uh, Celtic, significant victory, uh, title race. 
at Aberdeen. Uh, not the best performance, but does that matter, Paul? Well, Si, I'm very, it was very strange, Si. I heard a lot of the managers complaining about the conditions, Si, but for me, in every Maria collection, Si, when it's wet and wild, it's always a good time, Si, isn't it? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't know what they were moaning about, Kev. I couldn't quite understand it, but no, listen, Si, it's, it's certainly with Celtic, it's a huge win. Huge, huge. absolutely huge, huge win. And my God, I, I sound like a broken down record, but the world class change for us, it just keeps on producing. And what was the stat? Did I send you it last night? Yeah. Let me read this. Kev, you can talk to me about Right, Kev, but here, I want to give you a wee bit of um, credit to Aberdeen. I thought Aberdeen were brilliant. Brilliant. Do you know what? the only thing about Aberdeen? I don't know why they'll change it. Eh? But every time I watch Aberdeen against Celtic or Rangers, I always part the bus against them. But then yesterday they, they came out mm -hmm. and I thought they did well, but I saw champions in it and they win. They actually, they win. They actually like, controlled the game comfortably. Aberdeen. Yeah. But they just couldn't get the ball. They couldn't get that final <laughs> ball. Like there was a lot of really good crosses out by the boy McGinn. But the strikers were nowhere near where they should be. Like the one that went in the, the cross the face of goal in the first half, the second half, the header. There was one where the, the boy took the header off the cutter's main. So they had like I would call it classes half chances. They had a chance. Half chances or half chances. Class. Half, <laughs> half, I, I don't know what was They had saying. a chance at the corner at all. Now I'm again put it in you in the box or not? Yeah. What about that? Did you see that corner where he whipped it in? And Two and McKenna was, they must have had something planned. And McKenna's looking at the defender, he doesn't even realise that the boss came into the box. And he just turns away and plugs back up the ball. park. Who's right. that, McKenna? <laughs> McKenna. But I must say, McKenna and Taylor, I thought they played, up, up until the second goal, I thought they played Edward very well. Getting tight to him. We, I think we slaughtered him on the podcast. So you, <clears> I've heard you for a while, Sai, saying about Aberdeen, they've been maybe trying to change the way of playing, Sai, of playing nice tippy tappy football. That's no name, Si. Yesterday they went back to the physicality and I thought the boy was great up front, Si. What was his name? Men. Uh -huh. I thought he really played many right. times. And it was a great, a great battle, Si. So listen just to this. I've got the assist up here. James Forrest assist for Chris Ayer's late winner at Pataudry was his 100th assist for Celtic, side. He's got currently 88 Celtic goals. Only two players have got into triple figures for goals and assists in a Celtic jersey. Jimmy Johnson and Henrik Larson. Is that not magnificent? That's Wait, say that again. Yeah. Only three players have got into triple figures. Aye. So for goals and assists. Oh, goals and assists, right. Yeah, it's there, si. I don't know if that makes any sense. So what's he, that... what's he on the reason? So he's on 88. He's on 17 since the new, isn't he? That's what it is this season. Is Se he 17? 17. That is exceptional. He was that. quiet as well, wasn't he? And I think that's the sign of your top player, yeah. And especially a day like that. Usually in days like that, I remember growing up, Nippy wingers are like, they would be sitting on the bench. You don't need them in games like that. Uh, but he's just that special, so I get him on in every game. I also need to give you a bit of credit to Neil Lennon. I think what separated him and Gerard this year is he's changed it better than Jenner. Mm -hmm. So in that formation, 3 5 2, it wasn't working, obviously. Didn't they wait till 80 minutes, 60 minutes, changed it 4 3 3, end up scoring a goal for it. Finally, I think the game certainly changed when it went 4 3 3. So I think. Yeah, well, James, you went over to the left, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And they brought on, who was it they brought on against Celtic? Yeah. But I just thought, I think the Hayes had a chance as well before that. So it certainly changed the game a wee bit, but no, you're right, Si, it's been a, a great um, I think position to yourself. Lennon saw the fact that Aberdeen were beginning to like, attack a lot more, so he put on an extra defender just to... It was as if he kind of said, we'll take a draw, we'll, we'll take the point, we'll get it here. Who's and that, what, Lennon? You thought Lennon I, would take I, the thought, point? I thought at that time in the game when he made the changes, I yeah. thought, went back to the back four, I thought, they are quite happy, considering the conditions and everything else, I think they were quite happy with the point. But then what that allowed was that Aberdeen got a wee bit excited and thought, hey, we could actually get something. And that's where Celtic got them on the break with the ball to Edward. Great back heel, Griffith, uh, what do you call him, Forrest running in, laying it off, and a great finish by Big Ayer. We need to give Johnny Hayes a bit of credit as well. <coughs> he gave one last great performance in Aberdeen jersey. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, I was actually thinking, I thought, the Storm, the Storm Dennis must have entered his fucking head. <laughs> Link was blown that brain about because what I don't know doing? what he's doing. Right what there. was he doing? It's oh, horrible. It's no. like you're a sub and you need to come on before half time. But ah, how can, how can you be so nervous playing for Celtic? <laughs> played for Celtic so many times. We've done it on us as well. No, I've well, <laughs> done it done every day in training. <laughs> but certainly, so, I, listen, I, I was actually feeling for Johnny because I know the exact feeling. When you come on, it's hard. Your first touch or first pass determines your game because if you have a bad touch of pass I heard I actually heard seen Lenny at the other side especially when Lenny's right next to me and that was as soon as you made that mistake it was only seed and then he was just blooming crosses out everywhere side but listen um, no it wasn't for me Johnny yesterday that's see sure. that see that feeling mate, when you, you're a sub you're just chilling huh. you want to come on 60, 70 somebody yeah, goes down after 20 mate. And you're, see when you're worse feeling. as well that's the worst because you're winning you tried it, right? so if they score it's your fault you know ah, I know. the ah, worst yeah. mate see when he shouts you in <laughs> terrible um, Phil should say it's over while you'll do or is it league over? Can I say it's over now, no? till the end of the season? 
Celtic need to play Rangers twice. Rangers have got a game in hand, so I'm not saying it's over yet, but some people could say that. But, and to be fair, Rangers have probably been better than Celtic in the head-to-heads this year. You could say that, aye, but you didn't see the end of the season comes. Mm. Because Rangers did well at Parkhead, and then the National Breaks it's just turned over a month or so. Rangers have lost, what, two games in four or five games now? Yeah. So I don't know. Just I, I don't think it'll be over yet. Kev, you think it's over? I think you tip Rangers to win the league. No, before I, the break. <laughs> He's asked me this question every time. At that moment and that time, the way things were going, Rangers to me looked like favourites. But whatever they've done in Dubai, and it must have been a, a, a hell of a, a bender. It must they have came been back your answer, and the hangover. The like. hangover has uh, been lingering. It's been stinking. <laughs> Um, a couple of uh, tramadol, some bananas, and some uh, vitamin C. They'll be, they should be able to get themselves <laughs> back going, but that hangover it's, it's, it's causing them. It's causing them all sorts of problems because even though they got a result, yes, it wasn't great. But no. do I think the league's over? I think there'll be. I think there's. I think there's an opportunity that if Rangers win their game in hand and then win the old firm game at Ibrox, and it obviously does narrow the gap to a point that they're in. They're, they're closer, but. Anything can happen. Like yesterday could be a, 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 a slippery slope for Celtic, but they managed to come through that game. Celtic's got, um, got a couple of tough games coming up. They got, they got Hibs, mm-hmm. Hibs away, so that's going to be tough because Hibs are Hibs are playing well now. But I do think that the tide is changing. Celtic are the favourites now to win the league, but there, there will be something that happens between now and the end of the season. What that'll be, I don't know. But Rangers can't afford to drop any more points, yeah. and certainly the next Old Firm game will will decide the, the where the title's going, I think. Neil Lennon was uh, seemed celebrating after the game. He's not really celebrating like that. No. no. I, everyone thought it was a result, but I heard that he'd found a snooze in his hood. Found a snooze. <laughs> it's it's one put a snooze on. I see uh, that, uh, <laughs> Johnny Hayes is putting snooze in his boots. Somebody I suppose that, aye. You're right, Si. He was. He found a snooze, wasn't it? Was that, would that have been the, the result that Lenny would have been looking at, thinking I think that's that could sign. have been the upset? I think that's a sign of relief a wee bit, isn't it? Because mm. he knew. I think the performance, aye. the performance wasn't great. And I think it was more a relief. That's why he's probably celebrated to go up to Aberdeen in the cold day, the wind was howling, and no to perform, but still come away with three points. That that is huge. Absolutely huge. Well, Shai, this is gonna be this is gonna be gold. Anyone watching aspiring coaches and get ready to write this down? Is it over? Yes. Wow. No, I'll tell There's you why. Headline. I hear a lot of people keep saying ex Celtic kid Paul Slain says title's over. Ex ex. ex Excel, ex Hornick, ex ex Hornick, <laughs> Excel, who bamboozled his way through Amsterdam. He's got a cheap team to talk about football. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly, say si, what I would say is the reason I'll say it's over, and Celtic won't. Celtic players and manager will want to hear that. They don't want to hear it's over. They want to take each game at a time. You keep saying, say si, the old firm games. People are saying there's still two old firms. So I don't see Rangers. They're saying they're, they're going to catch up, but Rangers are slipping up. The other team side, mm. I can't see Celtic. There probably will be a slip up side, be a couple of games here and there. I think Celtic will drop points, but I also think Rangers will as well. And I don't see them closing that gap side. I just don't. I, I mean, that performance via Kamarlik was a disgrace. It's all right beating Livingston um, at home side. Us four could do that to now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but for them, well, have they hit the post? You were there, weren't you? You were there. I had a post. Were you there? McGregor. Ex Livy and Rangers. McGregor had a great save for Dykes and all. Mm. And Aberdeen. Ex Aberdeen as well. Oh, Don't mention that. Your hands been a bit. Don't mention that. Uh, Sai, what, what, what do you think about it? Do I think it's over? I think it's over. I think. I can't see Celtic dropping. Can I see Celtic dropping that, think, that amount of points? I think, I Celtic didn't need to go and win no. these Celtic Rangers games. They can go and play for. Not that they would play for a draw, but they didn't need to go and chase the game. I think. I think, think the. I think too much with for the, Rangers to with the game that's coming up at Ibrox side that Rangers need to win that game. It's a, there'll be no ifs or it's, it's, it's a must win, and that might suit Celtic style of play that where they can. Cut them open on the counter. On the counter. There's nothing worse than going into a Celtic like Rangers oh. game having to win. But having to win a game. Is, is Rangers going to be? Is, are they going to still be? It's like if they win the two games, I, I still think they'll drop points elsewhere. Say, mm. it's proven to be that recently. Aye, well, on, on yesterday's performance, the command performance, they're not playing particularly well. So if they come up against a good side, mm. say they were playing Hibs yesterday, Hibs would have beat Rangers yesterday. Mm. But it's not. I'm not saying this because a Celtic fan or it's, it's Rangers. I would say the exact same if it was other way about. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So uh, just quickly, last last bit on Celtic. Uh, Wildy, I'll ask you. They go away to uh, Copenhagen. Uh, will they go back to one up top? Why change it? So you keep the two. Keep the two. Edward. Keep the momentum going. Keep the mentality going. I don't know. I don't understand why you would want to change it away from home. 
But you know, Lenny's always got something up his sleeve, isn't he? So like yesterday, you seen it going for a back three to a back four, and then going with two up top. So you never know. I think that's what I say. Like I've got over Rangers, <coughs> they've got the players that can change formations. Whereas you go and watch Rangers, you know it's the same formation every time. Yeah. I think aye. yesterday was the only yeah. time he actually changed it. And went two up front and end up scoring after it. Was that right? Yeah, aye. So I think we we sold it going to come here and say. I think so. They should go out there with two up front. I think they can get a goal out there. Mm. I think they can beat Copenhagen out there. I know what you're saying, but I, would I think keep, even I would at home they would have enough to overturn maybe like a 2 1 or a 1 0 loss in Copenhagen. They would turn that around at Parkhead. But I think if you go out there and go for a goal, then maybe take Edward off or somebody off if you can get that. I, I, I don't know. I think I think that Celtic should be confident enough to get to Copenhagen and get a result. Paul, I wouldn't go with two sides. And it's no. I just think in Europe it's a, it's a different ball game altogether. Sign. I think it, they've always said in, in Scotland you should go with two because the teams are going to be sitting in. But I certainly think in Europe I would maybe go for the one side. Just, just pack your midfield. Aye. Right. Okay. Then you go because they the midfielders can get, would, get your goals as well. Can what would Lenny be interested in? Europa or the Premier League? Premier League. Premier, Premier League. League so I can't can just say something. Uh, just, I, still, where is he just going? Need, I just need to hear the... Just need to hear the press, just do it here. Just to get myself going. No, yeah, it's Lenny. Paint up on the tail. I just need to hear. I need to get myself going. I need my adrenaline going. I feel flat as a dog today. Go get a flat as a dog. You started off quite well, so you have. I know I have. I've been brilliant. What's she doing? I just need to get myself... Just keep going. I just need to get myself going. Just keep talking, because if it's not, then people will realise. No, we want, we want to wait for you. No, we need to Many wait. Many then. Just until I start to feel the endorphins released. Right. So they could be here a while. We're doing some, uh, we're doing some uh, burpees and that as well? No. No. Keep that for the missus and me. All right. <laughs> brief, Slaney, <laughs> brief. Then I do any burpees because your breath's honking. To be fair, Slaney, that's a fair number of press ups you're doing. Yes, he's decent. Maybe he's, 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 tr he's trim now. Wait to see the colour of that nose when he comes up. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 glowing. Oh, my God. Look at him, he's glowing. If I do it five coffees a day, I feel shaky, shaky. Oh, you're needing a sugar boost, mate. I need something to eat. Right, let's go. Right, Come go. on, Slaney. He's back. That was magnificent effort for you there. What did you get there? About 35? And the rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you what, Slaney, I love a haircut, by the way. Super. You, Simon's in that. Yeah, well. That's good. the best haircut I've seen you. See me Chinese boy? Playing his groggers again yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> right, here, I want to say something. Oh. I find it astonishing, right? Say like they're going for nine in a row. Rangers are trying to stop nine in a row. Their two first choice left backs are injured and they've got Andy Halliday and Johnny Hayes playing left back. Why in the January window did both of them, if that's your problem, why why did Rangers no go and get a, a left back? Greg Wilde, there's your question. <coughs> why is Andy, you see the command the game? Alright, you're not playing well, but if ha Andy Halliday's in the right position, the first goal doesn't go and you probably win the game with no. Now it's no anything against Andy Halliday, he's a good football player, but he's not uh. left back. I don't, or maybe he's seen jealousy something in him that we don't know. We don't see behind the training. I don't know. <laughs> but if you look at Celtic, why would you let go sign a left back with Greg Taylor there? But Maybe. what happens if he gets injured? Because it's clear that if Bollywood didn't even make the squad just then. I mean, much like Johnny Hayes instead of Ball and Golly. I think Bolly's done. Bolly's done. For, for Bolly had an absolute nuke against us. Clyde, did he? I think there's obviously Sai. Go on and have fucked. Bolly, <laughs> Bolly, Bolly's come in, got a bit of stick at the beginning. Turned it around with a few decent performances that has been found wanting recently whenever he's been called upon. Johnny Hayes is that squad player who's been there for like 35 years or something. <laughs> Keeps getting a, an extended deal every year. We so, uh, we an option. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the manager knows that to a point, he knows what he's going to get out of Johnny Hayes, whereas with bowling goalie, he hasn't got a scooby do whether he's going to turn up or whatever. Or right, fair enough, certainly, but Rangers... So, Rangers, on the other hand... You know Barisic gets injured quite a lot as well. Why would you not go and buy a left back? I think Gerard would look at Andy Halliday the way that Lenny looks at Hayes. He knows what he's going to get and he knows with Andy Halliday that, although that is not his favourite position, he knows that he'll get a better performance out of him at left back than anybody else that he does but why he didn't go and get a left back maybe he didn't have the budget to go and get a left back maybe well, the he said in an interview that he did have options to bring people in so he must have had some sort of but budget. where are his options another striker another midfielder a winger left back might have been his last option but like you say you've got to have cover in all positions to make sure that you've got enough depth to have a title race it's not fair on Andy Halliday no it's not fair on him back. I don't think you need another central midfield player or something central midfield players at Rangers yeah. they've got a lot of centre midfielders who I think do the same job aye yeah five yard passes aye it's aye. like side to side they just keep the ball ticking over ticking over and I think like, like Hardy's come in 
and he'll take a wee while to adapt the game and some of the, the things he has done has been good but they could have done with like a, a proper attacking driving midfield like Andy Halliday would be a better choice sometimes in something midfield because he actually goes forward he looks forward but I, I don't know what's going on with Rangers they, they, they just it, it, Gerald seems to be quick to, to, to have a go at them all for no performing but they're all probably looking at each other in the dressing room thinking, right, okay, who's going to get the gig this weekend? And it's like, a, to me, it looks a wee bit disjointed at the moment. So si, can I just ask, and you know how much I respect your opinion, guys, what has happened? I, I, can't, I can't believe it. I honestly, like, I don't know if there's something behind the scenes. I don't know. There's it's, something, it's just crazy. People, gonna, go, how can you go for beating Celtic at Park Ken? And Hibs and Motherwell. Hibs and Motherwell. But what, <laughs> just, uh, but what is, so what is, have you ever been in a situation? You know, like I couldn't believe the other night somebody said about. Uh, see, when you go through the Rangers team, I don't think other than the Scottish Championship, I don't think any of the outfield players have ever won anything, right? Right. Against Kilmarnock. You've got Steve Davis sitting on the bench. I somebody says to me about Astroturf, but 12 believe. games to go, a, a place that you've struggled, uh, you need to play Stephen yeah, Davis. Yeah, of course. He would, he would control the game side, and I think even if you don't start him, it was crying out. To, they, they lost control of the game before the goals went in, and for how he never brought him on side. Um, was beyond me, honestly. Like, but how they weren't the only before the the, the break. They weren't the only beating teams. They were playing brilliant side. Si. Mm. They, they went away east the road. I think they were up three or two right away. Went to Fir Park. I tipped them to draw. They went and blew them out. Then they hammered Celtic. So what? Is, I, I can't quite get my head around this game. Oh, the confidence either. levels that they had after that Celtic game. Have was... you been in a situation in your career like this? <sighs> like no, no. I just think that. Like, how, how can your confidence as a team, as a group, be so high? Because I would imagine after that Celtic game, knowing they were on a, a winter break, they would have away and celebrated. They would have had a right good team bonding away in Dubai, wherever it was. And they've came back and it just went like flat. And that's no just one or two players, it's everybody. But then, is it easy to play well when you're chasing somebody? See, when you've got a uh-huh. chance to win and go top of the league, is that a harder pressure, especially when you're at Rangers? Oh, right. It just seems to me like now when it actually matters, and it's Gerard's probably right. Some of these players just can't handle it. I as I say to you, none of them have won anything other than Davis. And Greg that, will tell you. That's a lot to go and play for Rangers and win a league when you've not done it before. He'll tell you, and I've sat sometimes half on about it. See the, the, the emotions of being a footballer, first and foremost, right? You go through all sorts of emotions that only you can relate to in that. But see, when you're playing with somebody like Celtic or Rangers at the very highest teams in our league, our game, the pressure, see when things don't go your way. See if you're no. Like you don't have the capacity <laughs> He's to, getting bad to memories, yeah. see if you don't have the capacity to stand up for yourself and, and, and stomach that pressure, yeah. you shouldn't be there. And to me, that's what's happening right now. You said it there that there's no many players in that team actually won something. Mm. So they don't know what the feeling or the pressure is to actually go and win something. It's all right, Tavernier has won the the, the 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 Donald Duck Cup in the, the, the third division league oh, and things like that. They beat us in the final year. Oh, did they? I'm sorry. Um, I have asked more than it's Peter Head, so come on. <laughs> right, anyway. So what my point is, is that now that the pressure's really on where it's they're starting to hear noise for the crowd, because they're not happy, mm. I think some of them can deal with it. I genuinely believe that's... The, that's let, the, let, Rangers, the Rangers are pinning their hopes on a guy, Ryan Kent. He's never played a full season at a club. He's been on loan. He's never actually played a full year and done well for a full I year. Heard year a, I have a stat that Lewis Morgan's got more assists than him, and he's only played something like four games. I'm not, I never I think his that, price tag's keeping him in the team, innit? I think so, yeah. You know the pressures, Greg. How, how hard is it when it's things are there? He says it's hard, man. You know what? You do well and then suddenly you get one bad defeat and then bang. The pressure's on. You press hit you. And you see people actually giving you abuse. It's just... It's mm. natural. That's the thing they've went That's from. That's why you need older, more experienced guys in your team, didn't you? They've went from one extreme of being like... Talk beating about. Celtic to, to ultimately being told Rangers are favourites now to win the league to now to this and like the turnaround it's is incredible it's crazy but I mean you could see it if it was uh, near the end of the season but halfway through uh, mm. I'm struggling mentally so that's incredible eh? like, would you imagine as a player would you imagine as a player you're going out in the pitch and you start to feel if we're blown this year mm. see I think one guy that has kind of turned up is Scott Arfield because he's yeah. been there and uh. done it he's played in the English Premiership what is it three, not, three goals in the last three games yeah. you need, I think you, need, you needed to go and get more players like that Mm-hmm. Scott Arfield is that player on your team who gives you a 7, 8 out of 10 yeah. every week yeah. you know that regardless of whether you're playing Livy away in the wind and rain or you're having a, 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 an easy game against 
I don't know, Hamilton at, at Ibrox in the sunshine, he will turn in the same performance week in, week out. Stephen Davis will do exactly the same yeah. for you. He will give the ball away quite a lot of times, but that's him trying to do the right things. But he will not stop to go and get that ball again and try and keep trying and trying. Whereas sometimes in our Rangers, you'll see Kent do some things and it's as if they want to get rid of the ball. It's like pass the buck to somebody else. And I think there's a lot of that going on in the Rangers team right now. Uh, Greg, I want to ask you because uh, Gerard criticised the players after the game. You've played under Walter Smith. Yeah. Would that, would that happen under Walter Smith? Would you criticise the players in public? No, not really, no. I think you but, would. But in the dressing room? Ah, you would in the change, but when he came out and tell the press that he sort of the players. Uh, so do you think that's right what Jenner's done, or do you think you should keep it in house? Oh, people have got their own opinions, I don't know. Maybe you should have just kept it in the house. Sometimes he's got. He's came out a few times and said it, did not he? Mm-hmm. And players maybe are just oh, fed up of hearing it now. What, uh, well, how bad could mm. Walter Smith be? <laughs> it could be weird. Do you ever get that? What did he say? No, I never, I never got it, no. How could you be a young boy? How do you not get it? I don't know. I've watched you. Keep my hair. <laughs> <laughs> what, one in the wings and cocks? That's <laughs> 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 Can you remember a time that he did go off his nut? Eh, nah, I couldn't remember at all, no. But I can remember, I can tell you a story. Right, go for it. Champions League night, we played Man United, and uh, we were training in the morning at Murray Park, and uh, we were coming from our hall, and Big Kyle Arthur jumps my back and fell, and desiccated his arm, didn't he? So I'm like, so I didn't know nothing about it. Just him dropped my back. What was that? Young man came here. Oh, young fuck. man. He, he listens to the podcast. Go, <laughs> young man, yes. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go, man. He's like, oh, it's not your fault. I've jumped in your back and all that. I was like, train, that's fair enough. I thought, yeah, dad, I made a, I made a start here. Fucking Kyle Hutton starts. I'm like, you're fucking joking me, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that? I thought he was going to pull me up for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how would you take to a manager publicly criticising you? Well, I actually put myself into the position if, after every podcast, I si, have you done a interview after every press <laughs> owner performance, and I heard you. If you went for me, it would, it would break me. Would it? it would absolutely break me. I si. would never do it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you maybe have a wee seed in there, Sai. Si. Um, but do you know what I mean? If, if just imagine that, Kev, if you done a press conference after the podcast. I know I'd be I'd be like what you say there. How would you take it? Because I, I certainly see. If you're honest, Sai, right? It's probably what we all want to hear. We don't. We always going about people on the honest. Yeah. So right away, it's we sort of then say we want to hear it. Then you hear it. And you go. You should have said that. So it is for a fan. But first and foremost, the players are the ones that are going to win. So you need to keep them on side side. Mm. So t- to question their mentality for a player, that's probably the worst thing you could. What have I questioned your mentality? It would just break me side because we all know I'm very fragile at the best of times. Mm-hmm. And if the, the what do you call it? You still seen that doctor now? Aye. Many occasions because obviously hydro build up. See, did the tan? Did you put your tan on you? Do you know who put the tan on me? I can't, don't know if I should say it. <laughs> Paul the Tim would be relieved of duties. No, way. Do you know who's doing it now? Why? Johnny Sunderland. <laughs> <laughs> He wants to make you like a good show, doesn't he? Yeah, he's put a tan on me. <laughs> uh, I think with Gerard as well, like, see, if you have got a team full of guys that have been there and done it, I think criticising them's all right, but when you're, you can see your team's in a fragile state, I just think. Adding more pressure to them, yeah. and it's. Do you think that um, if you boys in the team of one cups, McGregor, Davis, nah. So other than that, so who? I know Defoe, but he's injured, didn't he? To be fair, would you struggle if Walter Smith did come out and slot the players? Would you think the team would have struggled? I don't think they would have. Nah. I didn't either. But the camera used to slot me all the time. Once I think once after an interview, called me a chihuahua. Oh, just a little chihuahua. He's playing against rock- <laughs> No, Nibbling. He says, I want a Rottweiler. Yeah, my missus has got one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, he's in it. <laughs> I didn't mind talking about that. See, when a manager did slaughter you, though, what did it make you feel like? What, like some people think, oh, God, that's it. Where is it? For well, me, I would think, well, I'll show him. But, but all the top managers it. don't do it. Mm. And everybody hear Klopp coming out and slaughter you. He blames the ref, I blame everybody. Jenner could have easily went out and blamed the refs after the game. To be fair to Gerard, he does slaughter his players in terms of that he says like someone can't even handle the pressure. Then he goes on to, he always goes on to say that that's my fault because I've signed him. So he does take it's as if he takes some of the rap. But surely if he thinks they're no good enough, why why do they no why do they not get dropped at the team? Because they always seem to start the week, week. The, the next week. So what's the point in slaughtering them? I just think if you if it's not a transfer window, then you shouldn't be doing it because you need to keep the players inside side. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Uh, right, the game got called off Saturday. Um, you know how they got it on Sunday? <laughs> Covered it with his jumper. <laughs> Can't really have used it again. Um, <laughs> you ever had games called off before? What'd you do? Do you need to train? I'm right not going to. Since I was the age of three year old, so I up to the age of now, if I ever played a game of football and received a text the night before, 
That was the greatest feeling on oh, earth. Brilliant. How was how good was it? The <laughs> game's postponed. It was the most amazing feeling. But what also what would you say? Would you train? I I hated that. It was horrendous. Though you used to be sitting there for a game after your pre-match sitting gets called after like head to the training field. They're like, oh. And the man's like, treat it like a game. They're like, no. Was it a bounce game? You would do? Was it be running? I would do a bounce game, say. Um, oh. But it was horrific, wasn't it? See, trying to get up for a bounce game, man. Oh my days! But that is the most for as strange. And I think a lot of players would say it, even though you love the game. Okay, have you ever had a game called off? I think uh, back in 2011, uh, we played Hibs in the New Year's Day derby. The weekend after that, I think we were supposed to play the D United. I think it was, and the game got called off. Um, what day in the game? I it was it. It was like the morning of the game, I think, and it was quite lucky because my, my Lynn had we had Hardy that day. Right. All right. Uh, what about you? Why did the games called off? The train. Uh, no, I never trained. We were at Yovo away, I was at Plymouth. Yovo's a shit home. And we get called, I get called <laughs> off. But I had my car at the hotel, because I got somebody to drive from Plymouth to Yovo. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to jump in the water and go see my mate. My mate was working in Portsmouth, jump in the water, went to Portsmouth. For the day? Aye. No, for the night. What, no, the boys were ah, training? The bo- no, the boys went home, the gaffer tried to get, you know, Dead Adams, right? You wanted the boys to go back and train, but it's two and a half, three years back, back no, for training. forget that. Forget that. <laughs> I had one of the best days of my life. We got called off last year. I got called off at nine in the morning. We were already up in Aberdeen. So Jimmy Max says, well, uh, we'll not announce it till half twelve. Tell You can tell your missus that we're training. So we thought I found my missus saying, game's going to be off. We're going to be training at two o'clock. Straight in the boozer at ten. Back to Glasgow. Sat in a pub. Two minutes from my house to Real Mackay. You know the Real Mackay? She thought I was training up in Aberdeen, me and three of the boys sat there all day. Steaming. Oh, Walked up the road, none of the wiser. Brilliant, isn't it? How did you manage to stay sober? No, I never, but I usually get a drink on the bus on the way back oh, anyway, I so. I just thought you had a few. A few that had a few. Good huh? for you. Brilliant, That's man. super. Jimmy Mack. Jimmy Mack. Jimmy Mack, brilliant. See, right. when the games are called off, on you go, lads. That's what it should be. Of course it should. Brilliant. Just to go and join us in the pitch like an idiot. Has there ever been an occasion you've been glad the game's called off? See, some. Every game. <laughs> actually, actually, it's weird. I actually used to pray, honestly, like every night before a game, please call this off. Men know that, eh? Why? You've got so much ability, Paul. Brilliant. Uh, it was more in the winter, side I hated. What Do you know what they called The weather and all that. Back on the Rangers, um, home tie v Braga this Thursday. Greg, how do you see it going? It's a tough game, mate. Tough game. Because I think Braga are on beating in six, I think it is. They beat Sporting Lisbon, beat Porto, and beat uh, Benfica. Wow, since Mantos is really producing Stato. Since the new managers took over, I think they've won a cup as well. What's his name, the new manager? Oh, fuck, <laughs> do you know, do you know uh, Clyde's last six results? <laughs> no. uh, are you still watching them all? Arkin. Kill me, man. Arkin, Braga. Do you know what? I think it's the type of. We are Rangers are right now, we've just obviously talked about them. It might be the game that gets the season going again. Going a big Thursday night, European, under the lights. Um, a shitty pitch. A shitty pitch, That's obviously. A shocker, I, I have to kind of believe Ivorox has turned it. I know the weather's a big part of it, but... Not a couple of nights shouldn't be Oh, there, man. I just think that Rangers, this could be the game that gets them going. Because if, 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 if they'll know right off the league, but they understand <laughs> it's difficult, can they get a run in the, the Europa League? I, I agree. I think it's a, a perfect game for Perfect the timing. Talking of the pitch... Remind you, big man's here. I see it. Very patchy. It? Put it done. There's a goal mouth there, look. <laughs> you There's a penalty spot right there. What, well, um, you fancy Rangers, Slinny? No. No? I feel like I'm always saying this, side about Rangers, and it's not as genuinely as now, I just don't, say The way they're playing, say they're struggling to, they're struggling to win any game, and via side like this, um, I think they struggle, Sai. What, uh, what's happened to me, Morelos? Because he, he was flying, wasn't he? That's it, maybe that's the problem with Rangers. Because no. he was flying through the season. Now he's nowhere to get the goal face. I think this that. is a game that'll kill, like you say, I think he'll he'll get himself up for this game. Do you think the blue sky yeah. but rising first tonight? I would like to see a big performance of Rangers because ultimately Scottish clubs doing well in Europe's a win win for everybody. And if Rangers can do well on Thursday, a huge result, it'll it'll spur them to kick on because when you're in a rut, it's very hard to get out of it. So this is As a big opportunity. Exactly, Sai. How many it's years is that now that? <laughs> Have you got, are you in the longest rut in history? <laughs> I'm on a, I'm on a, what, 2013 game at football, I'm on a seven year rut. It's hey, tough. Yeah, I'll be soon, you'll be finished that soon, big man. And the hydro comes out. Hydro. Uh, right, do you play with Hearts? No. One of the teams you've not played for. Hearts, <laughs> what about Hearts? We're two down at home at Hamilton, mate. 
Uh, Mate, do you know what? I give a shout out to that hero, the wee guy that plays for Hamilton. Just hates playing night. Just want, wants to get sent off oh, after Hamilton. thirty minutes every week. <laughs> Who is that? He got to be sent off his time this year. Hamilton. To be <laughs> Hamilton, I think. Huh? Hamilton playing for Hamilton. Three red cards, but they're all quite. So I think they're all quite. So I feel oh, sorry for him. That one's soft. That one's soft. Mate, it just bounces up his hand. See, if, they, if Hamilton keep on on the pitch, the Hearts get beaten. Huh? Yes. Aye. What is happening, man? They're an embarrassment. Uh, that would have been four points behind if Hamilton won that. Like they're still close. close. Like even if they had a loss, four points is not a, a big deal because always fine with the bottom six. It's when the split occurs that the the results really matter. Yeah. But the boy Stendhal who's come in, I think they've played eleven games. He's won one, drew. I think it's drew three and or drew four and lost six. Yeah, and then won that's, in the cup. That's uh, uh, that's, uh, that's sucking material. I get so I'm being getting slaughtered on Twitter because I said Hearts have got the third best squad in Scotland. Right, look at Hearts players: Suter, Halkett, Walker, Ick Piazu, Naismith, Boyce, Connor Washington, who's playing the English Championship last year. The wee boy from Man City, what's his name? Oh, the the wee uh, Machino, Machino. Machino. Uh, player Peter Harren. Hands up there with the squads, nah. Up there, up there. Hickey White. Who's it? Hickey. Hickey. Whoever he wins after. Is that not one of the best squads in Scotland? 100%. Right, so what, what, is it just a manager, Jay? I think so. I think the, they had to change Levine, but I just can't believe they went for this guy. A guy that didn't went about the game. I think at the, the stage you were in, I suppose Levine knew nothing about the Scottish game, but certainly this man doesn't seem if he's the right man. Kid. I just think with, like, with hearts, right, for me personally, I think you've got to have a feel for the club. You've got to know something about the club. They've got a huge fan base like Hibs. Celtic Rangers, the Derbies. I think this guy's just came out of the blue and it's, it's expected just to turn Hearts forwards around. And it's no going to, like, it's no going to, like, I think he got off to a bad start with the way he treated Christoph Bela, Glenn Whelan. There was better ways of doing that. Um, they get a huge result against Rangers, but that's it. That's the highlights of his tenor as the Hearts manager. Would you sack it? Would you get rid of him? I'd get rid of him, I. I, I would. I, I would get rid of him because... That's, that's got to be a headline tomorrow. <laughs> but I, I would get rid of him because the worry is, if things don't get any better, they're going to get relegated. Yeah. Like, what's more important? And paying a manager off and get rid of him and get somebody in that can steady the ship and, and get things moving forward and stay up, or do they just accept that that's us? We're going to get relegated See, because... Uh -huh. It's all right saying, I bet they put in a big performance against Rangers. Where's that performance? Every Was that performance against Rangers? Was it a fluke? Because to me, they were open. They could have lost that game easy five or six. St. Johnson, they could have lost five or six. Even the game on Saturday against Hamilton, the chances that Hamilton missed. It was only because Hamilton went down to 10 men that Hearts got something. Yeah. Ultimately, they should have won but the game. But see, for me, like guys on, with the guys that they've got on the pitch, they, they should be able to sort that out amongst themselves on the pitch. You change the captaincy as well to Naismith. So Naismith, she's... Players like that. Take See, surely, like, if you keep pressing high and they keep kicking the ball over the top, you surely, if you're Naismith, you got that. Lads, I can drop five down. Surely, these uh -huh. players are good enough to get them out. Yeah, I know no you're saying really how done. many times are we going to keep blaming the managers? It's got to come down to players at some stage. Do you know Correct. what I mean? I think people you people have not, never heard of this manager before. Have you ever played in England? Like last year, I was with Plymouth and he was at Barnsley. All oh, right, you've played in England. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he gets team promoted for League One. Yeah. That's how I knew him. I mean, good, they, they, were good they were decent, aye. So why did he leave Barnsley? But why did he leave I Barnsley? Had a I don't know. Had a bad start in the championship. So did he get sacked? I think so. I think he was on Gavin Lee, wasn't he? Remember that bust up he had with Joey Barton? So he did. Did he? Oh, was that him? Uh, uh, what was that? Yeah. Joey Barton was it? Went, went for him in the tunnel, aye. Busted but that's, that's went to court as well. That was uh, a case for that, aye. But um, you blame managers your whole career, didn't you? Absolutely, sorry. I think they're all to blame everything they do me, and I actually believe the success of Celtic is moments down to me. <laughs> I mean, so I'll say what I want to say when I want to say it. Correct. <laughs> right, I won't ask you, but this Paul Slane, John Moss, your, your mate, Mossy, uh, was Dan Gosling, the Bournemouth player. He's been moaning brilliant. because the ref was saying, um, Fucking talking about brilliant. the relegation zone, you're still in the relegation zone, you're having one, your team's having one. This and that, very disrespectful. Dan no, Gosling sorry. needs to grow up. Sorry, I absolutely love it for the referees. <laughs> I, I honestly I love it because I mean I, we all know and we've all been a pitch, the abuse referees takes unbelievable. So do you know what? Brilliant for the referee to give them a bit back. If then, and for him to come out and complain is absolutely perfect. I've not even seen this. But uh, Dan Gosling came out and said oh the referee was saying this and said so that. Why doesn't pitch. he come out? Why doesn't he come out and see this? Pitch. <laughs> Why does it? <laughs> why doesn't he come out and see what the players were saying to the ref? Because I'm sure there'd have been a much more what they were saying to the referee. What do you think he'd have been saying to your man John Moss? 
<laughs> no, but listen, so I do, do you agree with me there though about the uh, referees doing all sorts of Can't believe he's came out and said this, eh? I had to be, see if I never was giving me that buzz in there. But see, I want to ask Can you. Can you imagine? We, I mean, I, but, but it's the only problem we eight side with the referees is when this happens, it gets the other referees excited and we were leaving up one outside. side. Do you know what I mean? He's he spoken about this there. He keeps swearing now. He's too young for that. <laughs> <laughs> see, if you were a ref, who, what player in Scotland would you give a bit to? Oh, what would you say? Better He's my face, but. Yeah, looking here. <laughs> Keith us this. I'll let you think about that, right? Question. That's that's a good question. That makes me think about that. Should I be an answer I'm thinking? Of? No. No, just I don't know. I just want you to come up with something. Uh, Kev, you ever had a referee comment on your own performance? What you didn't have under that team? Oh, sorry, sir. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know, but like, like Slaney says, absolutely brilliant for Class. I'm going to say the now. In the rest of your life, do not repeat it, and I've said <laughs> <laughs> Let's go again. Start that again. Roll the camera again, Sam. Roll the camera. <laughs> the referee was magnificent. Slot on the player because you know what it's like to sell side when things don't go your way in the park. Um, you absolutely what are you give, to sell it, it? You give the ref dogs abuse, don't you? Yeah, Everybody do. does. And they take it. They look at you as if to say, oh, I would love to say this to you, but they Remember don't. Ref? That's pathetic. The fact that he's, he's actually, actually, <laughs> is actually the fact, the fact that he's actually put his hand up somewhere in the classroom and said, Excuse me, eh, miss. The referee Miss says something to me. Miss Kyle. <laughs> Mr. Fuller. <laughs> he said, excuse me. Oh. The ref says something to me. Mr. Fuller and Miss Kyle. Teach us. Oh, oh wow. Is that why uh, you didn't like Mr. Fuller? <laughs> By the way, I've had, you know, I've refs. I've had actually had refs while I'm playing saying to me, that right, Kevin Slaney, I tell you, didn't I? You're joking. I swear to me. Am I? Am I? I? Uh-huh. So That's cool. magnificent, eh? Good, isn't it? We never saw them refs again, are we? Mate, referees used to, there were some refs I remember used to, uh, in, the, in the low leagues, used to give people a bit of know. I think the low leagues are mere. They'd be like, Cam, do you know what you're playing in that? It's fast to them, eh? <laughs> my, uh, Can't my, argue with that. Why would the NA referees give you a bit? Nay, me, because I've not played a lot of football recently. Oh, <laughs> oh, don't be like oh, that. Come on. Uh, do you give referees a bit to when you're playing? Aye. What, slaughter them? You slaughter them, eh? This is a fucking stupid man. <laughs> <laughs> well, the kids I listening, we picked him up off the street the day. He's just come up to help it. Have you? That could be the best time we've had on here. It's just a fucking stupid. Have you been red carded? Ah, uh, twice. Not far. Kicking out at Willow Flood against Dundee United. What, for a ranger? Yeah, I just Did turned you? and kicked him in the arse. <laughs> <laughs> He'd enjoyed that. What, uh, who was the manager? Walter. Did he, he must have slaughtered you for that. No, nah, he was alright actually. He'd have probably liked that, eh? Uh, really? Just, I was in the corner flag and he turned and scared in the arse. Uh, how long did it go? Did you <laughs> say it, Willow Flood, you fucking stupid? We alien, he died. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what, uh, what was your second red? Second red, second red. I can't remember the second one, but I've sitting off twice, mate. Right? What about you? I can't remember your second one. I can't remember, mate. I've played a lot of football, like I said. So, <laughs> oh, so <laughs> that makes it even worse. The fact you've not played many games, you can't remember two red cards out of the five games you played. <laughs> oh, not, no. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Kev, does this make refs more relatable? I think so. Um, Mike Dean's good as well. I like Mike Dean. Is that the one who did that switch against Kobe Spurs? Uh, uh, he's a character. <laughs> Start celebrating. Do we feel that your man is, uh, remember the Jeff? Winter, no. Jeff Winter, uh, he used to give players a bit. Uh-huh. Um, Clattenburg was maybe horrendous. What, like having himself? Aye. Aye. He was very arrogant, I remember. Loved his Was but, he arrogant, kid? Aye, he was arrogant, aye. Had his hair transplant over, didn't he? Uh-huh, so he didn't. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that young man. Uh, <laughs> That's three, innit? How many transplants? Three. You've had three, three hair transplants? Aye. What do really? they do? Fire needles that, in your head? You give me that number after this show. <laughs> Is that what they do? What? Just fire needles in your head? Aye, numb you up. For nine hours. It's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, Superb, mate. Good, I'm going out to get it. I'm going bald, eh? You're not going bald. My mate, I'm, I'm hiding it really well. I do use the, the hydro money. Aye. Much is it? There's mate, it's supposed to be. what, five grand? Aye. Oh, jeez, oh. My guy Stevens paid 14 grand for his in Canada. Is it looking good? I think it's good, isn't it? Where is he in New York? New York, yeah. This has gone completely off. So, anyway, Aye. what was your favourite session? Boxes and games? I was talking to you, James, earlier about it. I fucking hate crossing and finishing. I hate crossing and finishing. It's so false. And you're stoning out in that line. And I, and I remember it. Jamesy was out right, right? And I was out left side. And I was, I can't remember what it was. And Lenny, had, so I was putting cross it. And I couldn't, mate, I wasn't clearing the first man. It wasn't the corners. This was just a crossing and finishing. Was it Lenny used to be a newer crossing and finishing after two or session. So I was putting it in my left foot and I couldn't get in. And he came up to me and went, I remember seeing you from other when you used to be able to get it in the box. 
Si, that's what he said. And after that, no joke, mate, that was me, eh? Like, I never, I don't, I'm sure I didn't train with him again. And I had a brilliant session that day. But because of the crossing and finishing. Because of the crossing and finishing, couldn't believe it. And I think I threw in maybe about <coughs> my knee was sore, but. I've never seen anyone do well at crossing and finishing. I always sure. think the crossers make an asset, do you know? Uh, it's so false, but I've seen a game, I, I could always cross good. It's stolen out there freezing, man. Uh-huh. And then see, see the time the ball comes to you to think your touch. Oh my God, Si. I used to time. panic, eh? <laughs> do you know what else I hate about crossing and Why do they always get you to zing it out? When, when, when did you ever see anyone zing a ball in a game other than Gerard right? and Scholes? I know. Aye. So false, aren't huh? I? I hated it, mate. Uh-huh. What I was eh, Strikers not like it. But for everybody else, it's rubbish. Crossing and finishing, hope with. Right, we're going to talk about Greg Wilde, lads. Well, that's what he's on for it, and he, by the way, he's made an unbelievable impact today, So, si. Is Greg Wilde the fourth member of the party? Because Gary Najib's Harkins will never be back. Wow. Do you agree? Why not? But your performance was perfect, Sai. Si. <laughs> Do you agree with me, Sai? Si? No comment. <laughs> Don't sit in the fence, Sai. I agree with you, Stevie. How are you not having him there? Ah, he's a great guy, but I think Can he was... Can you say, I think he had a wee night the night before, so he's a bit rough, on not so we'll is, is it staining you, aren't he? It's staining me, oh. Do you know him, Wilde? No. Well, who's, your, who's do. the best character you've had in the game? Character? In the changing room, who's blew you away with how funny they were? Kyle Lafferty. What's he? Uh, what was he? Uh, he's a bit of a brunk story uh, for him. It's just like, on fireworks night, we McCullough brung in a, a set of fireworks. And then, before training, you put a firework in a wee bottle. And he'll go up to behind uh, Alan McCoy's and stick it in the, the ground he's doing an interview. And he'll just blow it, blow it and all that. <laughs> and the show, he's in the showers and all. We're all having our showers. We'll find fireworks in the showers and that. So, so, find what? Find fireworks, fireworks, fireworks in the shower. That's so great. Yeah, brilliant, that. so it was. What, is he is a good uh, lad, him, Wilde? Huh? Is he a good lad? Aye, ah, brilliant. Yeah, uh, just move the Gilly a wee bit. No, no, no I'll right. right. not away, you da. Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. This guy's got too much, hasn't he? Me and his mouth is going to see how I give you Oh, yes. <laughs> Deary, me, right, originally it's Selig. Originally it's Selig, the uh, man here. Was, uh, was Jamesy there for you? Jamesy. You're Gif- Jamesy Gif- Gif- didn't you? Yeah, stop it, didn't you? You love him, don't you? Oh, he's the best. You must have played I against played him. him. No, I played with him. Did you? Aye. And me, Hayden Cochran. Oh, he was a good player, me, Hayden Cochran. Me, Hayden, him, him, him and Jamesy came through. Aye. And what happened to Selig? Why did you leave there? Who, me? What is no, Hayden, why did Hayden leave? Of course you, why did you leave? Who, me? When did you leave for HB? 14. That was quite a big deal at the time, I'm sure. Yeah, I just, it was a swap deal with Sean Fitzharris. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, you've got a, a, a question. You can ask him a second one. I'm a big man. What made you swap over to Rangers? Was it the youth system? Hey. Was it cash? Was it cash? Nah. Be honest, just be honest, Greg. Was I'll it tell, cash? I'll tell you a story, right? Right, go. <laughs> That's the biggest deflection I've ever seen. He's going to tell us now. Tommy Burns, right? He wanted to keep me at Celtic at the time. And, uh, but I walked into the chain one night after school and I had a Rangers chain on, didn't I? And around my neck. And Tommy Burns seen it. He says, what the fuck are you doing that in your neck? I realised I had it in my neck. He's like, are you going to stay with us? Are you going to jump ship? I said, I don't know yet. Two days later, I jumped ship to Rangers, didn't I? Were well, you a Rangers man? I'm a Rangers man, mate. Aye. Why did you have that one? Just, that I just totally the, forgot, uh, mate. usually take it off, going usually, in, and you forgot, huh? I just totally forgot to take it off. You were pushing for a move at 14, weren't you? I was a wee bit, mate, yeah. He's stuck his shirt in. Brilliant, brilliant, man. Uh, right, you can ask the next one, mate. Funniest boys in the destiny. Well, I've actually done that. Done that, aye. What about McGregor? Sorry, mate. No, not at all. What about McGregor? Good exit, aye, bro. Good guy, aye. He set me up a belter in Ho Wong restaurant, didn't he? Fucking went, went for something to eat. <laughs> Can all the boys are sitting there and fucking Nasey, Davis, Wafferty, they're all sitting there. And I'm sitting there, young boy. Bill comes in, we play card roulette. I said, like, nah, mate, I can't have players. I'm just a young boy at the time, mate. Still in the youth changing them at the time. So put my card in, they're all setting me up. Fucking Gregor sitting at the table, taking all the cards out. Put them in there. So you left me two, but they think the wait- waitress knew what card I was taking. To pick. To pick, and it was fucking mine, mate. I said, he's fucking How much was me. it? Six, 600, 600 pounds or something like that. And did you take it? I had to pay it, mate. The other boys oh. walked out and left me, didn't they? Oh, that's a killer, mate. That's a That's a hero. Did you pull him up? Did you pull him up? I couldn't pick him up. Pull him up, mate. I was shit scared of him, mate. Who was the best players? Davis and Yelvich, mate. Oh, Yelvich. Was he amazing, eh? He was, it was frightening, mate. Frightening. I can remember like, we'd done a, a training drill. It was five sides, right? Three touch. We did it in two touch. Just talk, just chip the keeper, mate. Just casual. Easy for him. Ah, easy. Unbelievable, mate. Davis is well. I do like Davis. Davis is a top Do you know, here's a wee, I think I've said this in the podcast before when Stuart Armstrong went to Southampton. 
he said that Davis, all the players that were there, said Davis was by far the best. Even off the pitch and all. I don't know, you have said after that. Be, after said beating Celtic in the cup final, right? And we were all going out after it. And I didn't have a lot of money at the time, so Davis was like, I'll, I'll help you out. I said, what? I'll help you out. So we went back to Ibrox, came up with our envelope. Give me an envelope with money in it. Oh, that's How much is that? I'm not telling you, mate. My <laughs> fuck. That's brilliant. Did I ever tell you the one when me and James were in the room? James again. And uh, <laughs> you <watched> James. James. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Parker chatting to the door in the morning. Came in and went like that. Any of you get hair gel? What are you talking about? And went like that for the gaffer? Why do you want to do it? <laughs> and people wonder what Gary, old Gary Parker's role was at Celtic. I couldn't mate, but me and James about the shoot, so we see when he was in the room, we were like, did you get check? Man? But mate, we'd hit the giggles just thinking of Lenny putting gel on. But I don't know whether it was Gary Parker put it on for him, but I could. <laughs> <laughs> so was it Gary Parker gel on his hair? That's good. Mixed it up. <laughs> but it's like, I couldn't, see, see that way, see that way when you're in a meeting or whatever, and you're dead awkward because you've got that laugh, the open laugh, you don't want to laugh. Me and James were gone, eh? So we were sitting there and Gary Parker's still, it's been serious. He's like, have you bought any gel? I was like, just for the gaffer, I just said it, mate. Like, fuck. And uh, I remember we were on the bus, me and James were sitting on the bus, the gaffers came on, mate, hair off, slipped back. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> That's tremendous, man. I remember when Lee McStay used to come in the shower wash, and then after it, he'd be telling me, he's telling me, he'd go, hey, any of you got any an anti buzzer? <laughs> anti buzzer. Oh man. <laughs> I want uh, to get back into Celtic, Sai. Can you make it happen? How? Oh, I just want to get back in. I do it. Seriously, I'm begging to get back in. The only thing I, I said, I was going to say, I said to James again there. <laughs> no, the only thing I said the other day, see if I'd went in in January, how good would it have looked? Uh, the runners have picked up. Uh -huh. But I can't go in now. Do you know what I mean? Because it, it might just fall down. So, anyway, what are you going to say there, Sai? Kev's up. Kev's up. What was Juf like when he came to the club? Head case, mate. Was he? Aye. Aye, total head case. Because you see, you portray this guy on the Crazy TV man. and you hang, you can't be like that. Mm. And then it's obviously better to hear it Have from you got any good stories for him? No really much stories. Just, what just was he about this place? Look. Walking about and all that with the day? Just big time as fuck. Was he arrogant? Aye. 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 Any big time shots? No really, no, but my mom loved him, didn't he? My mom just loves Juf. <laughs> Seriously, we had a we had a, we had an after party. I was all over him and that. I was like, "You're kidding me, own man." <laughs> <laughs> what was Jiffy giving it? Was he giving it a bit back? I was just cuddling and that. My dad stood up and said, "What's this fucking dump one day, man?" <laughs> 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 nah, but he was funny, he was alright. He used to turn up and used to part his motor in the gaffer's space and that, didn't he? Did he? Aye. Who was the gaffer? Walter at the time. What was the motor doing? See, you've got the main entrance at Murray Park, like one behind the building. He used to park in at the front door. Walter used to park behind him and say, Who's fucking motor's that? <laughs> Jeff's like, That's mine. <laughs> just head just headcase, mate. Just to do everything, man. What was his motor? It was in McLaren, wasn't it? Aye, but the door used to go up and that. It was, yeah. uh, but it was no like gold or silver or something like that. I think it was like gold plated or something. Gold plated, aye. Was he a good player? Nah, he was rotten, mate. Was he? Nah, was he, aye? Was, who was it then? Blackburn, 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 Bolton, or Bolton. Did they not jump about in Blackburn Academy with his medals and that after he won the league? I don't know, did he? Ah, he didn't. But he goes showing them off and he fucking play a game, man. That's <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. My mom loved you. <laughs> you won the league cup in 2011 playing the full game. By the way, that's exceptional. And it's I can't believe you've not threw that shout in here yet. What was your memories going into that game as Celtic were favourites beforehand? Did you know you were starting? The night before? No, nah, we were playing PSV on the Thursday night. Did you I, play? I started that game. Wow. What a week. And then the Sunday, we were meeting up on the Saturday, obviously got to the hotel for the Sunday game. But I didn't know I was starting, so obviously I, must have, I was thinking about mate, using making changes at the time. So we had breakfast in the morning and the gaffer said, well, we're having a meeting. And the uh, usual gaffer comes in with the code, you know. Can you do that? He comes yeah. in with uh, the board, flips the chart up, wild on the left. I said, that's just a I'm up surely, man. Pure nervous as fuck, shaking and that. So that was the day of the game? Day of the game, aye. Oh, Did man. you think you were going to start, no? No, I thought he was going to bring some, another player, experienced player in because we were playing Celtic at the time. So I started, I was nervous, I was like, what the fuck, my gas straight away, I'm starting, blah, blah, blah. Where was your mum with Jeff? Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> 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 so we were driving up to Hamden, you know, fans fucking cheering us on and all that. Just before we went out for the warm up, I was sick in the toilet, weren't I? Nervous, just oh, yeah. total nervous, aye. And then the whistle went, I was, I was calm, but I was sick, not before the game, mate. Fucking oh, hell. 
Yeah. That's yeah. an excellent story, man. I, I done well, mate. I, I done all right. Aye. Did any of them say like, did any of them pull you aside like the coaches or anything? Just say, no, like, just let me relax and let me go. I just got my bed in it. Uh, Instead of too many people like Rooney you can kind of like suffocate you and get so nervous, mate. But none of the coaching staff and music was on. It was nice and relaxed. Who were you up? Who was right back? Right back. Wilson. Uh, Wilson. Uh, oh, he gave him. Well, you run him ragged, didn't he? He him. <laughs> you run him ragged. And then Brown was on the right hand side, weren't he? Did you have a touch with him? But they were playing, who were they playing? Uh, on the Thursday, they were playing, was it Benfica or somebody away? And he was playing middle of the park, so I think he played wide right against me to try to wide me up. But he was giving me a wee bit at the start. What was he saying? Just saying, like, you're never going to win the cup, no, you're too young and that. Is he, Two one, mate. On you go, son. <laughs> <laughs> he lived a dream mm-hmm. to play in a cup final against Celtic. And score, no score. I mean, and win. And, and win. After that, like after a lot, you know, so, like, from a young age, I'm only, I'm still 28. You know what I mean? Do you think people forget about that? I think they do, aye, a wee bit. How did you, how did you celebrate? Did you go to the Rangers players? You got your own pals? No, we went back to Ibrox. Uh, and then we were in this to be orange bit upstairs, and I, I slowed all my mates to all come down. There was about ten of them. Did they all come down? All came down, aye. My mum, dad, my sister, and that as well. Oh, Who's just going that game, two man? Two one. Mm-hmm. But you used yeah. to have had that at Celtic, where as it even being there reserves. as a young kid, obviously not, but reserves. But you're in the heart of the big club. Yeah, you had a great and you team, want, didn't you? Uh, we had a great youth team. Yeah. But the first team was too good at that. Team. And any opportunity you wanted to bring your mates to be involved in that, yeah. like you brought them along. Like when I was at Rangers, I was saying to my mates, "Cut this weekend." This is not show you in the dressing room and all that. And they were like, no way, big man, will you? Did they, did they hear all the pictures in the dressing room that they say they have and all that? Uh, I said, oh, they're all there. What about the graphers over? going to see the graphers over. Uh, your pals are, your pals are like, obsessed with them. Oh, and then I've got like, them coming out the tunnel at the end of the game and they've got the videos and that. And that's memories that they would never have got to see if it hadn't been for me. But it's like the big club's a big, big thing. Well, can I just ask you, I, I, you know, I'm obsessed with team talks. Now, what was um, Walter Smith's team talk before the final to the team? His team talk can always was he amazing? Was he amazing? Like, would he really motivate you out there? He was nice and relaxed, you know that? Was he? Ah, he, he, he never really got like flustered with things. He was nice and relaxed. But you see, like, we were all talking in the changing room, the music was on, but he wasn't in at the time. He must have been in the TV interview before the game. And, he, and everybody was talking. Then, see when Walter walked in the door, silence, man. Uh, what's your favourite performance in a Rangers jersey? In just Jersey. Um, Fortus, Ibrox 2011 ran. Yeah, Wilson. that one or the PSV at home on the Thursday night before the, the cup final game. How's that atmosphere, PSV game, before when they're all lining up in it? That oh, was brilliant, mate. It's one of the best teams I love. Forget, mate. It's unbelievable. Can't, see, like, when you watch me, a younger coming through, everybody says Champions League, Europa League, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're playing in Europe, enjoy it, mate. That's, that's what I did. And, and then to play on the Sunday against Celtic, two massive games in a space of like four or five days. There you go, young man. Greg. Greg. You made an inma- an admirable, right, sorry? Admirable. Admirable. No, that one, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Car crash. <laughs> what was the period of the time like in 2012 during the club's financial implosion from a player's perspective? Mm, tough, mate. Was it? Ah, uh, it, was, it was hard. We, were, we, had, we, were, we had a game against Hibs reserves away on the uh, Monday. But we all came into Murray Park before we left, half pretty much before we left. But it was all in the news the night before that club was going to administration, blah, blah, blah. We didn't, I thought it was all, all a joke. And then we went in before and then we had a meeting before we left to go to Hibs. Listen, the club, I think it was going to go down this road where players need to take pay cuts, blah, blah, blah. So we play, went and played Hibs that day and came back, it came out in the news, didn't it? I can always remember it in the Hibs Studio ground that came up Sky Sports News. At after you had played them? After we played Hibs. So yeah. during the Hibs, we were playing this game. Obviously it's happened. We've been just got administration. So all the players came in and on the Tuesday, we had a meeting. And then all the administration people came in and said, hey, this is the pay cuts you all need to take. So first thing players take 75. Uh, reserves will take 50 and the youths will take 25. Like, uh, so all the older ones stepped up to the plate, like McGregor, Davis, they all fucking piped up, didn't they? I've never seen the change of like this in my life, I've never forget it, just started caning Craig White, this, that, this, that. So you, you never done nothing for the club. And then about a month later, it still kept going, and then, and then it, I just thought, you know what, nah, I'll just take the 75% pay cut and leave. 
So I'm, were you were you only having to take fifty, but you took seventy five? No, I was the seventy five because I just moved into the first team. But you can't. It's not the players' fault. How? Why did they get punished for that? But well, people think that people think that's differently now. But yeah, people don't see that side of it. But uh-huh. I had. I was just growing up. I was still still seeing my mom, dad, still paying my bills, my car. It's like going to a job and like my sister's an electrician, and she so you ask her to take a seventy five pound salary cut. She's not going to do it. Is she? Your missus what an electrician? No, my, my sister is. Oh, sure, right? Yeah, uh, full time electrician. If I just remark about finance <laughs> in football, <laughs> everything's relevant. <laughs> Everything's relevant. So if you're earning a thousand pound a week, you, you live a, you live your life to a thousand pound a week. Yeah. You earn a hundred grand a week, you live your life to that. So when bills are coming in, just no matter how much money they say you're on, you still got to pay these pay bills. bills. Did you ever speak to Craig Lloyd? Did I? No, me personally, I didn't. Know that. Is he an asshole? <laughs> what he did to the club, but he did. Uh, he was a bit of a prick. Yeah. He's got a book coming out just now. I heard that. Are you going to read it? No. No. Not interested. He was on Off the Ball Saturday, wasn't he? Has he? Uh-huh. Aye, Tom good. Strange characters, don't he? I'd love to. Ali McCoy's story, he told me in an interview, is the best ever, mate. But the Tin Hats, have you seen that? No, oh, is you it? need no. to watch it back, mate. Okay, Tin Hats. I can't watch it tell back it as good long. as I watch it back, it's brilliant. Is it good? Ah, uh, brilliant. I've not heard it, mate. Uh-huh. What, just on McCoy's, how was he when all that bad stuff was happening? He changed a wee bit, mate, to be fair. Have you? Uh, Aye. How's it hard? You can see it in his, his face. He was in his bubbles. You get him every day. It was a shame, man. That the coat, like the kitchen staff, and everything was just nervous. We didn't know nothing was. No, the kitchen staff was nervous because Kevin. <laughs> no, we, 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 extra burgers we, and that. We were quite, we were quite, it would hit him hard because he's a. He, he loves the club. He loves the club, club, and he's very. Like I was talking about earlier, compassionate towards people. We teeny the wee woman up in the, the uh, like yeah. all these people that he would have known growing up through his career. We're going to maybe all of a sudden lose their jobs. So he wouldn't have been worried about his own self. Nah. He'd have been worried about everybody else. And that's probably the, the, the nature of the uh, man. See, when you said earlier about that. McCoyce was, um, um, what, the new McCoyce? Did yeah. You, did you mean that? Uh, you're the new McCoyce. Thanks, I. I could see you on uh, Top Spot and that. Oh, what was the other one? Question of Barker? Spot. Question of Spot. Wow. You and Barker. That'd be unbelievable. We should do an open goal question of Spot. Oh. You could be Sue Barker. I mean, side the captains. And we'll get a couple of guests on. That would be a great idea. Aye. Well, I'm just saying there will be a meeting after this, aye. Because Greg Wiles came here today and performed very well. And you know Open Goal Podcast can only have three members, so there will be one leaving. Well, where are you going? <laughs> Bastard. Bastard. <laughs> 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 you got a Listen, big offer? I fell for it, Si. I think that, you know, the way we should decide? A challenge. Aww. Do you know what? Me and Greg, while just to compete all the time, yeah. wouldn't it be great if we competed right now? One last time. One last time for for the fans' sake. Let's what, do it then. But oh. uh, somebody says to me, both of you are working together now on the ghost train. <laughs> yeah, <fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> That took me two seconds to have three. Right, are we doing a challenge? What we what? Why don't we do, because he's quick, you're quick. Ten up and dinners. Quickest. <gasps> no, I'll get... You start there. And I'll start here and you need to try and catch me. Good, let's go. Run round the table. What for four and fucking break my neck? Fucking good dog Danny phoning him. He on my mind. <laughs> right, ready? Wait, 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 wait. Ten. Ten, so one. Bone to be wet wild. Get your mother So what are you touching? What are they touching, Sai? What are they touching? The ball. The back wall. So I just put your horn up there a minute. Me just fall away. You see that? Uh-huh, that was that good, Sai? Great, you will get in there, will you? Oh! Sai, will we do five each? Right, you ready? Five each? On your marks. Get set. <laughs> One. Two. Two. You ain't even fucking touching it! You're sharp! Go on, Steve! Come on, Steve! Nice. Sai, you're ready! Sai! Go on, Steve! Eight! Watch the gold! Welcome to the party! <laughs> <laughs> hey, just open that door, so I'll see you next week. So Dizzy's fucked. Well done, mate. Oh. You've lost the challenge yet. I has. Has he done? I've done the clap, the pressure clap. One. Sorry. That's why he's in, innit? The goat. He's the goat. Oh, okay. Right, well, you sit down. We've got a couple more questions for you, and you're done, young man. You can get back in your belt. <laughs> oh, look the belt! Oh, oh my god! That was weird him done. I want to see your belt. Look at that wee thing. I know that. Oh. Sai, 
slinny, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your smile just hypnotizes me and I just love your flashy ways. What's your next part? <laughs> <laughs> I feel sick. Uh, I'm going to get a drink of water. I feel shaky. So. Right. <laughs> After Rangers, Greg. <laughs> Uh, a while down south, any good stories for us, your time down south? Down south, down south, I think. Oh, and Kyle, you must hear on Kyle's story. Are you at Bolt, are you? That's a Bolt, aye. Oh, aye, aye. A few quid at Bolt and all that. Aye. Yeah, of course. Are you the plane then? Aye, it's, it's like a story I was going to say there. What happened, mate? When I just left Rangers, and uh, I went down to Bolton, at Reebok, but that weekend, Bolton were playing Tottenham mm. away. So that was the Saturday night. That's aye, fuck. And then the Friday, uh, I went down a medical, back to Reebok, and I had to jump on a train down for Bolton <coughs> to London, because we were playing Tottenham. Right. Oh my god, I'm fucked. Mm. What then, transition? Brilliant. He's been a train. Then, uh, when I got to the hotel at London, went to team bus, I was nervous, never met the boys yet, and I'm jumping this bus with Bolton still in the Premier League. Going to the White Hart Lane, kicked off five minutes later. For a piece of my lung, but takes a heart attack, didn't he? Oh, Were you there? I, I was in. That, I was like, see, that's the bench. There's seats behind, so that's horrible. Eh? Six, seven hours later, this guy's taking a heart attack in the pitch, man. I'm thinking, what's going on here? Oh my god! Didn't realise nothing about it until obviously after he took a cataract or something. That's horrendous. You took a close that. Like, Sorry, I'm going to fucking feel. So it's I didn't. Bad, eh? I, I was. Uh, you're kidding me, on. So. Owen Coyle kept us down in London for three days, the whole squad. Went to the hospital to see him and all that. Wow. I'm like, oh my God. And then, after he came out of the hospital, we were playing Stoke away. So everything's a wee bit better. I had to sing, didn't I? Oh, what song did you sing? Do you want to Come sing? on, give us, a, give us your no, re- I'm reenact it. it. Simply the best it was. Oh. <laughs> easy peasy, but then in front of Martin What Petcher. did Owen Coyle say when you're singing Simply the Best? He's a big Celtic man, isn't he? He was all right, actually. He was did fine, he, he was all right. He'd enjoy that. How did the boys like on Coyle? He used to like, see it once that, he used to go, oh, was the boys drink water? He used to get crates like iron blue, that. I was like, fuck. Oh, I'm bad, man. Ah, brilliant. Who else? All his ex-managers have been hiding them all about him. And finally, how's life at Clyde now? Brilliant. Enjoying it, mate? Ah, it's good, mate. Just to get back playing again. You going to the island with Danny? Huh? You going to the island? <laughs> Murray got on the phone to me a couple of weeks ago and said, do you want to come in and train? Keep yourself going. And I says, ah, come in. A week later, in fact, I think we were playing news. She says, Do I just sign to the end of the season, get your games, and see what it takes you? I says, I'll leave it because we don't want to point Peter Ray away. And I was like, I'll just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll leave it. Next week, we played Dumbarton away. I'm like, ah, Yes, I'll sign. Starting, game's off. Get it. No game. Following week started against Bonnie Rig Rose, the worst pitch ever. Uh, it was, I'm like, Oh my day, and this is fucking Scottish Cup, and this pitch is shite. Why don't you just call it half, man? <laughs> then since then, I've, I've played it seven games a trot now. Well, that was good, I'm enjoying it, mate. Do you find, that, you find it tough? Like, thinking you went through the games, PSV, Bolt and the Premiership? Yeah, like you said earlier, mate, you get, I, think you get, you, I think you enjoy it a wee bit better. Because yeah. the boys, you know, sometimes some of your pals are playing against you. Mm-hmm, and you yeah. just have a wee bit of a laugh and enjoy yourself. Like, on a Saturday, waking up, like you said, waking up, and that's, you know, we've got a game on Saturday now. I'm, that's me waking up at seven Saturdays in a row starting, so I'm enjoying it now, mate. It's brilliant. Then you get this man back in there as well. Ain't interested, sorry. Media's my life now. That's it. Right, you gonna sing Bond of the World first going? Feel sick. I feel sick. You need to sing something for, the, for your sad. man, because he's been sensational, been tremendous. I think I don't think it'll be the last you see him, that's for sure, side. you know. And then the gold jersey, you think we'll see him again? I think he'll be back, I think he could be a regular, this. Wow. Fancy it? I'll fancy it, aye. Right, sing us out then. So what do you want me to sing? Sing what you want, mate. What's your classic? What lines you quote when you're under a pee? I call I need you, my heart's on fire. <laughs> right, that's <laughs> 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 it. Sorry, mate. Oh.